Okay, four people now, so I'm going to get started. Thank you all this for joining us this morning. My name is Mike Minnelli. I lead our uh, Central U.S. Um, sales team and have had a number of different roles here with Automation Anywhere. We've got two uh, partners joining us on our Digital Transformation Intelligent RPA and Unprecedented Times webinar. We've got two great partners with Fortress IQ, John Neasley and Shibumi with Ken Pellegrino. And each of us will be going through uh, different sections. We're actually, there's a story here, there's a digital kind of journey that people take as you start to look at, you know, looking at automation and digital workforces and that. And we're gonna kick off our presentation with our partner, um, Fortress IQ, then go to Shibumi, and then go to Automation Anywhere. Um, when we look at kind of the world that we live in, and as customers over the last three or four years have dealt with trying to, um, trying to automate or build a digital workforce, um, these three organizations play a, a very important role. That first role at the very top, you know, uh, process discovery, process mining, is a, is a very important area and an area that we see a lot of growth and high value from our customers in. And John is going to handle and, and take us through the Fortress IQ story. We then have Shibumi, who I, I love to call him a COE in a box, uh, a digital COE in a box, because a lot of times when I'm my, my, myself or my team is working with customers, customers are really struggling to take all the intakes in and determine what are those high value uh, processes and tasks to automate versus low value. They're all important and they all can have a role, but they're in, you, know, you can sequence them differently and, and Ken will take you through that. And then lastly, at Automation Anywhere, I'll take you through our platform and our story and how we're better as an organization with partners like Fortress IQ and Shibumi feeding our systems and vice versa, us returning data back to, to both those applications. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to John. Hey, thanks, uh, thanks very much, Mike. I'm uh, excited to present today with Automation Anywhere and Shibumi. You really can't find uh, better partners in the market. And while we are all you know, best in class providers on our own, uh, when you put us together, together, that's when a number of technical capabilities are really unleashed and the, the platforms can really be leveraged to their max. And, you know, when our solutions are combined, you know, that's when we really deliver, you know, what I like to call sort of truly exponential value. And, you know, move from a world where, you know, one plus one plus one equals three to one where one plus one plus one, you know, can equal six or seven or even eight. Uh, because we really bring out the best in each other's technology. So again, you know, very excited to be here and, and thanks for having us, Mike. You can move on to that first slide. So let's, let's start here. Uh, you know, we obviously want to be respectful of the current challenges to business and, and society that everyone is facing today uh, and hope everybody is staying safe. Uh, but it's still imperative that uh, companies transform to stay competitive and, and be successful in both the near and long term. And this is true today as much as it was, you know, six, seven weeks ago before all this craziness started. And a 2019 uh, survey of CEOs and senior executives found the number one concern of leadership, you know, the biggest risk to the organization was, you know, this challenge of transformation. And at the same time, you know, most companies are failing in this area and 70% of transformation objectives uh, are falling short of, of project goals. You know, of the 1.3 trillion that's spent on digital transformation last year, an estimated 900 billion was wasted when initiatives didn't meet their goals. Uh, but that's not the, the real paradox of enterprise transformation as, as I see it. And, and sort of here's the, here's the real paradox. Companies have failed to transform or you know, suffered numerous false starts because the biggest obstacle to complex 
large scale transformation is the lack of detailed knowledge on their current state activities. Companies have to transform to survive and prosper, uh, but they don't truly understand how they currently operate. They have limited process understanding, uh, don't know how their applications and, and data interact, uh, you know, don't truly understand what their customers expect. And you know, ultimately, it's really hard to go from point A to point B if you don't know where point A actually is. So before embarking on a, a major initiative, to be successful, you know, I argue that a company must map its processes, map its systems, and map its, ex map its experiences uh, before jumping on that transformation bandwagon. And today, despite uh, what most companies will tell you, that necessary level of operational intelligence just does not generally exist in most companies. Mike, you can jump to that next slide. So, as, as you might imagine, Fortress IQ has created a platform uh, to address this challenge, and we deliver real-time, end-to-end process insights for the modern enterprise. Our method enables organizations to make these data-driven decisions to successfully drive uh, your most strategic business initiatives from system optimization and, and process re-engineering to uh, stakeholder experience and, and augmented intelligence, uh, the fancy word these days for automation. And the, the platform enables companies to, to fundamentally do three things, discover, document, and model current state operations. It starts with the raw video data, that's captured uh, via an installed lightweight software agent on target desktops. These agents automatically capture all the inputs and variations on the screen uh, without disrupting your workforce or requiring any software integration. And that's really, you know, a, a key differentiator. There's no API, uh, no integration, no log files that you need access to. Uh, so projects can be deployed very rapidly. And John, uh, that's after such we, a, John, that's such a small agent. It is, even works on older like XP uh, machines. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, a, it's machines a small in, agent in, uh, in plants. All types of like low end things where people forget automation is occurring, or automation yeah. needs to occur. Uh, it, it's a very low bandwidth requirement, uh, light footprint doesn't require a lot of resources. It is Windows based, um, but outside of that, it is a very simple, easy deployment uh, to, to handle. So after we capture this data, you know, it's then read by computer vision technology and converted into data. So this process is essentially taking the unstructured live activity information and turning it into a structured log file uh, data source. And as you can imagine, this creates a, a massive proprietary data set of user activity that has never existed before for an organization and can really do incredible things with it. Uh, in the second stage, we or you can mine that data using natural language processing or machine and, and deep learning algorithms uh, that can be explored to categorize, segment, uh, find different patterns in the information. And this is the information that's used to discover and map all the relevant processes within the organization across any and all applications that your employees use. The final step that we have is the reporting and visualization of the data. And this is really shifting from data into insights to drive the business forward. We create consensus flows of the activities, which uh, you know, look a bit like Visio diagrams. We can provide uh, insights into process variations and conformance. And we can also auto-generate the level five PDDs, the process design documents, 
to speed and scale you know your RPA workflow programs. Uh, finally, you know there's just the pure raw data and insight that are available to explore the operational activities of your organization and figure out you know what applications are being used, how long they're being used, how effective they are, how many variations they are, all those metrics are available. So you know very cool technology that can drive value quickly. Uh, that says there on the bottom of the screen, typically in, in two to four weeks. And, you know, compare this to traditional process mapping with consultants. I used to be one, so I, I understand this piece of it. You know, there you're looking at engagements that are, you know, four to six months, millions of dollars, uh, lots of human resources required, uh, which in this day and age is a challenge as well, uh, with the travel restrictions. And also, I think this this feature gets, issue gets sort of swept under the rug a little bit. Lots of errors and omissions in those documents as well because of just the natural biases that people have. They go through workshops, interviews, time motion studies. They want to always put their best foot forward or, or give, give you the reason or give you the process they think that you want to hear. So that's kind of our solution in a nutshell. Mike, you can jump to the next slide. So two quick takeaways on this one. You know, first, as I mentioned in the opening, I wanted to give you a sense of the, the project flow between Shibumi and Fortress IQ and Automation Anywhere. You know, once the, the areas of interest are identified, you know, we automatically capture and map the processes as I just described. And then after that, the data can be leveraged internally or with partners to really help address the, you know, various business initiatives uh, that's really the, the second takeaway on this slide, you know, the, the enterprise value targets that we can support. You know, automation there at the top is probably the most obvious one as these uh, struggle with scaling the RPA programs and, and sort of rapidly developing the PDDB, PDDs for, for development, which we can auto-generate. And again, you know, you hear about scaling RPA programs, it's not an issue with the technology. Um, every program I've been available, for, uh, been been involved with, the issue is getting the analysis and documentation to the developers fast enough because the tools are so efficient and the developers are so efficient that they get ahead of the the, the BAs and the consultants too often, and and that's the real challenge to scaling, you know, an RPA program. Let me, uh, let me touch on the others as well. Uh, obviously, operational excellence, you know, companies are under increasing pressure, especially today to streamline operations. And it's a tough, if not impossible job, you know, without the data to identify, you know, what's the best course of action I should take. You know, other, otherwise you're relying on gut. The data and analytics aspect of our work uh, should be fairly obvious since we're providing that level of granular operational data that has just not previously been available to companies before. Uh, with conformance and compliance, platform can really leverage uh, to provide, you know, ongoing and continuous monitoring of activity and alerts can be set when, when certain thresholds are exceeded or, you know, there's a unnecessary operational risk, uh, the, the, the system can, you know, make that alert to to review what's going on. And finally, uh, you know, you've got stakeholder experience, either employee, customer, partner, you know, whatever, whatever that key stakeholder is. And I'm not gonna address this one now because the next slide goes into a case study uh, that we can explore quickly. And Mike, you can jump to that next slide. There it is. Uh, so this case study explores, you know, the customer experience angle of our work. Uh, and the impact of our technology around account activation for one of our clients. I like to use this one because too often in our field, the, the typical case studies are around financial use cases, such as procure to pay or order to cash. And, you know, everybody's seen those a million times. So this client was, was really struggling with a 23 minute AHT, which is average handling time around uh, dispatching technicians for certain new accounts. The client had tried going through the traditional BA consultant route to support the, the automation 
and you know struggled with lag time and documentation gaps. Our software was was brought in and and really put to the test and delivered 100% coverage across all the systems. Auto generated the necessary PDDs and and really without any disruption to the workforce. You know, ultimately we were able to drive about 3.5 million in reduced operational expenses, and the process was accelerated by 20%. Uh, NPS and and other customer service scores also improved, and you know, really great win for our approach, and and quickly, you know, demonstrated the the value of our platform to the client. Absolutely. Next slide, Mike. So uh, this is kind of wrapping up now. Uh, you know, let me summarize the, the key Fortress IQ value drivers in one place. We've really touched on on all of them throughout the session, so you know, no real reason to dwell on them, uh, but but can be helpful to see them all together. Again, just want to stress any process, any application across the enterprise, and you know, nobody in our market that we've seen can scale at this level. Um, and this is a, you know, massive uh, data set of, of your organization's activity uh, that we're delivering that can be mined for, uh, you know, business initiatives, uh, you know, across the board, as we discussed. Uh, just a, a massive, massive time to value improvement, you know, over the, over the traditional model, uh, especially the consultants, you know, our Customers, clients are really seeing, you know, value in two to four weeks. That's how quickly this can be delivered versus, you know, four to six months for the traditional consulting route. Um, and again, some of that is is the the deployment because again, no integrations, no APIs. Uh, but it's also the fact that this is, you know, we don't do a ton of professional services. We don't really have any professional services associated with the product. Um, again. Auto generate the, the the level five PDDs to really speed the, the development of automation. Uh, next one, not really addressed specifically, but our approach again is more complete and less biased uh, than than the traditional model because you're getting such a uh, large data set. You know, any little adjustments that people make because they think they're uh, they're being monitored or there's a time motion study going on or, you know, they're being asked to describe what they do in a workshop environment, you know, that's eliminated with our technology. Um, so again, we, we think we're providing a more comprehensive and less biased insight into the organization. Uh, and along those lines, again, finally, no impact on the workforce, uh, virtually no disruption. They're not pulled out of their job, don't have to go to workshop, don't have to uh, the deployment's pushed out automatically in the software agent. They don't have to click anything to start the recording, any of that stuff. It is just simply captured and they can move on, move on with their day. And Mike, you can jump to that last slide. Um, you know, finally, this quote probably, you know, sums it up better than anything I could have said over the past 15, 16 minutes or so. Uh, after two weeks, you got to know our business better than we do. And, you know, that came from, from an insurance company. Um, and again, that could, could have probably summed up my entire presentation in 30 seconds there, but that, that's really, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, you know, what, what we're trying to, to provide and give organizations that level of insight into their, into their operations that they've never been able to do before. And at the same time, allow them to successfully accelerate their transformation automation initiatives. John, that was great. That's, it. I, I, I That's think everything I had, Mike. Yeah. So uh, thank you. And, and looking forward to answering questions at the end of the yeah. session here. I think it's a great, now as we transition to Ken, it's like, okay, well, now that we know uh, or identified these processes and, and areas to automate, how do we prioritize them? And so with that, Ken, I'm going to, and when we look at where, you know, where the three organizations fit from Fortress IQ to Shibumi to, to Automation Anywhere, now, Ken, I'm going to turn it over to you. Yeah, no, that's great. And, John, it's always funny to uh, listen to your, your talk because it's uh, just like yourself. I'm a former process guy by heart. So doing process analysis and process workshops was literally we did until uh, we started Shibumi in 2012 was all about process background. So to see this always 
uh, just makes me think of all the stories of sitting in those and trying to build those processes out over weeks. It's, it's really spectacular what you guys do. Uh, so thanks again, Mike, for putting this together. We appreciate it, uh, the opportunity. But as Mike mentioned, we're kind of the piece that in the middle there that is, is what Shibumi is all about. And, and you can just go to the next, you can probably actually skip to the next two slides here. Uh, but uh, voice with the name, obviously, Ken Pellegrino with Shibumi. I'm the strategic um, uh, chief strategy officer for the firm. And kind of my responsibility and, and what we do every day is we wake up and work with kind of our partners and our customers to help them maximize the value that they get out of their uh, strategic transformation program. So John had mentioned the concept of, of, of these kind of enterprise transformational types of programs and the challenges that those face. That's actually what we saw eight years ago when we started Shibumi is the idea of creating a platform that allowed across all kinds of strategic investments, whether they be enterprise cost takeout, post-merger integration, any sort of transformational program where value becomes the thing that you need to drive, not just how fast are we, or not just how many, how far along we are in our process, but how much value are we driving and returning back to the business was the, the genesis for um, Shibumi as a whole. Uh, and as we, as we started the firm and we started executing on, on these large transformational programs uh, with a lot of our advisory partners. So as you mentioned, we're not a firm that does the work. We're not an advisory firm from that perspective. We provide a piece of technology that large enterprises use uh, as well as large advisory firms use. But, as we work with those firms, it became apparent to us uh, the value that automation could have a, a couple years ago in terms of even taking the, the concept of, I wanna cut a hundred million or a billion dollars out of my supply chain or out of my operations and applying those same concepts to automation became really important as we've noticed, and you can see it right here, we've all read charts, we've all seen articles, we've all heard stories about crossing the chasm and the challenges organizations are having uh, in terms of really scaling their automation program. And as part of the work that uh, we've done, we sort of noticed some, some trends and this is kind of the stuff that we've set out to try to help solve. And as organizations get started and start working in automation programs, you see the concept that there's not a single enterprise view for a lot of these investments. And that's because the, the organizations spin up uh, and there are different pockets of automation that happen across uh, different aspects, especially when you get into these large organizations. So you end up with kind of, I don't wanna say competing, but disparate groups that are using spreadsheets and different spreadsheets and PowerPoint slides and, and trying to loosely connect to each other and having that single consolidated view of how the organization is executing and performing on its automation journey uh, becomes a challenge. And then as those programs get started, uh, you tend to see that the lenses, and, and rightfully so in the very beginning, is focused on the technical delivery. Do we have the skills? Do we have the capability to actually automate a process and be able to, to take it from an idea to deployment and actually manage it? But as you're focused on those technical delivery aspects, not having a, an eye on the value and the identification of whether we're executing on the right processes right up front can become a challenge. And, and that challenge really manifests a little bit down the road when an organization is looking to, to as it gains traction, really start to scale and communicate the value that automation has back to the business. The visibility, because we have different groups and different kind of methods and approaches, we haven't taken value as a component of what we want to do in the very beginning. Visibility to the, the results, the impact that the program is having right up front becomes a challenge. And, and, and that's what we, we set out to do. And that's the, the background you see in the product. So if you can go to the next slide, Mike. Uh, and so we're the path to actually go one slide past. This is probably a little easier. Uh, we're, the, we're the aspect of the middle, go up one, sorry. Sorry about that, I meant the one with the workflow on it. I'll just describe real quick what we're doing. Uh, in this scenario, and, and, and appreciate it again, John, the, the work that gets done with our, our partners Fortress IQ in this scenario, but our end-to-end -end life cycle management really helps an organization communicate both, I'd say almost the health and the wealth of the program and the impact it has back to the business 
by really trying to take a holistic end-to-end -end approach to kind of managing, as Mike mentioned, even the, the digital COE in a box. So what does that really mean? It means taking value in the content, the process information that's being gathered by Fortress IQ, and in addition to that, allowing for people in the business just to solicit ideas from their day-to-day -day work where they have an idea for an automation, but consolidating all of that into a, a single place where we can do, as we've talked about, the ability to create both quantitative and qualitative scoring methods to, to assess strategic alignment, value in terms of dollars, hours saved, error reductions, lots of ways to sort of quantify the impact that an automation candidate could have but having all of them together means I can compare and contrast them and size them in comparison to each other and really in essence build out a complete business case, not only for a whole set of automations, but each one on its own, and then take that automation from business case analysis, prioritization, sign off to say we're gonna execute and we're gonna deploy uh, an, a set of automations to help solve these issues, and then in the platform, we can then track the delivery, the timelines, the activities, the dates, the work that's being done, the checklists to ensure that we're ready to deploy uh, and manage that all the way through to delivery. So we're, when we're actually off and deploying and it's been deployed within automation anywhere, uh, the real interesting part comes into play where we have an ability then to go reach into and actually extract back the performance numbers out of the control room out of bot insights and integrate that back into our platform to help compare the actual performance so how is the process executing how are digital workers performing in comparison to the business cases that were created so that we really get an understanding of we expected to have x impact we signed off on that we've been delivering at x plus one x plus y from an impact perspective and having that view so that it's not just a, a PowerPoint or a spreadsheet that gets put on a SharePoint site about how much value we're going to deliver. It's really something that we're tracking and then using to compare and analyze against the execution data uh, to really try to give an end-to-end -end view of what the platform is doing. And that's kind of what our, our, our platform does holistically. And then by putting all of that into an individual app, right, that's where you get to, you can go to the next slide, Mike. That's where you get to, to doing, and, and here's some, some just screenshots of some of the work we do with Automation Anywhere, uh, is tracking that automation program data is what we can do to provide, think of it now as a single source of truth is what a lot of people like to call it, to take all the aspects of what happens in a COE, everything from the, the multiple spreadsheets and PowerPoint slides, uh, and piecing that together along with the key KPIs that measure performance, as well as things such as like the, the status and the progress of each automation and rolling that into a single app that allows you to kind of communicate that back up and alleviates a lot of the, the work, the data gathering, the, the status checking that goes on with the COE and kind of turns all that into an automated system. So you know, I actually just got off of a call with uh, like an Automation Anywhere customer that's looking at at this and, and tracking the same component because they have, they just spent the last two weeks building out their key KPIs for an executive presentation for this year's, uh, for this year's investment in automation and having a platform like this, this is what they're looking to take on because of the idea that it's now available uh, constantly. They don't have to do that work every single time. It's just available immediately. And besides just tracking the automation data, you can, you can go to the next one. Is, is then how do we gather that data is, is because we're tracking all of it together as part of uh, the pipeline. It's no longer, an idea is no longer just a, a row in a spreadsheet. It wasn't just a content, a concept. It has all the data that's wrapped around it from the analysis that Fortress IQ is able to do, and then take that data and actually manage it through a stage-gated process where we're actually tracking the workflow. We're tracking approvals of an item going from uh, business case sign off to delivery, managing the checklists to ensure that we've dotted all our I's and crossed all our T's before we go off and deploy something. And having all of that organized in here becomes a really nice way to help track the progress and help ensure that we're, we're taking the appropriate steps to move an idea from you know, ideation all the way through the delivery. 
And having, again, all that data together, you can go to the next slide, takes all of that and allows you to really make uh, what we call value-focused decisions. And what does that really mean? It means taking all of this data, the performance data around automations to date, all the business case information, and now putting it into a place where we can create really impactful, but really easy to, to digest and, and navigate charts and visualizations. So I can compare a set of candidates, which automations I want to work on, or how are, how's our program executing, and, and, and plot them out on simple charts where and we've all seen kind of bubble charts where up and to the right is a good place to be. We can take those, we can take those candidates for automation and plot them out to help an organization make it a better decision about, uh, we have two candidates, they have some general characteristics that are the same, but comparing and plotting them out on all kinds of different ways to analyze them helps us ensure that we're, we're executing on the processes that are going to have the biggest impact, the biggest bang for the buck versus just simply the low hanging fruit from that perspective. Uh, and then finally on that last bullet point there uh, is the stakeholder reporting. I touched on it a little bit earlier, but I think if uh, oftentimes we talk to folks that are, are working within the COE for their automation program and that's what they're looking so, to have some help with, uh, I would say easily 75, 80, maybe 80 plus percent of the time is spent generating those reports like I was just talking about with the, the folks I talked about right before this call. Uh, where they're, they're going through and, and building out all of these stakeholder reports. And as the programs grow, as, as, the, um, as the word gets out about automation internally, uh, the idea of generating reports and status and communicating it with different slices to the executive teams becomes even more and more important. And it almost becomes like your own mini marketing event. Well, Shibumi, a, lo a long time ago, uh, working with some of our business partners, crafted the idea of could we automate that and actually automate the idea of gathering that data, sequencing it to help tell a, a story and actually generating cadence-based reports directly out of the product, presentations, if you will, that allow you to communicate back uh, without having to force people to go to a dashboard every single time. You also can generate that monthly status report, that weekly cadence review, slice by work stream, whichever way you'd like to deliver it to allow you to really communicate back what kind of impact this program is having to the various stakeholders that are out there. So it's no longer about having them go in and hunt and peck. I can deliver the message in exactly the way I want to frame it directly back to uh, my business stakeholders. And if you just go to the next slide, this was my, uh, I think this is my last slide. And, and you know, I, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense in terms of having an end-to-end -end kind of view of what the app does. And, what we see is, is when the organizations have a disparate set of techniques, spreadsheets and PowerPoints that are all over the place, they have an ad hoc process where people are, are horse trading about what opportunities they should automate and things of that nature, you end up with, I'd say, ad hoc, almost disparate kind of value. What we've seen and what we generally see when we work with organizations is the ability for us to be able to take uh, a centralized approach allows for us, based on whatever thing you're looking to focus on, growth of the pipeline, whichever way you want to measure it, savings that are being pulled into the funnel, savings that's being delivered, dollar impact that's going on, our ability to end-to-end -end be able to communicate and drive not only how much have we delivered and the impact it's having on the business, but also what are we working on right now, as well as the backlog, allows us to communicate really a holistic value prop of, of what automation can bring to an organization I mean, Mike, we oftentimes think of ourselves as like the, the fuel. We're like the fuel for the, the, for the COE to really kind of enable itself to, to kind of expand and grow. And that's, yeah. the, that's the type of work we do every day with both Fortress IQ and, and the Automation Learning Mark teams. That's, that's a little great. bit about Zoomy and glad again to answer any questions. Ken, one other, um, two, two things real quick. So sure. on your very first slide where you showed this, the chasm slide, I think a lot of people in our space think we're a hockey stick, you know, up and to the right. And I think we, we see a lot that, that 48% in that, in that original where they're, they're, the laggards are, are not there, but are getting there now with COVID. Um, and then the POC kind of players where, 
you know, they, they know they should be doing something, but they're not exactly sure what to do. And, and both, you know, when you're using partners like Fortress IQ and you're using partners like Shibumi, you have a much better opportunity to kind of not get into that chasm and go, you know, be in that hockey stick up and to the right, because the program, the program itself is more successful earlier on and shows value within the organization and can grow and adds headcount to it and adds technology. It adds all kinds of different things to it because of what both Fortress IQ and, and what um, Shibumi bring to the table. Can one validation point for me was some of the partner ecosystem that you have on the Shibumi side. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Because I, I think, I, I don't think you play it up a lot for particular reasons, but I think it's really important to understand who are some of the partners that are actually using uh, Shibumi in a, in a way where people on this call, many and I realize that it's Shibumi. Yeah, no, that's a, a fair point and I, I appreciate that. So, yeah, when we started uh, in, in 2012, we started working, as you can imagine, as I mentioned, on very large scale transformational programs and it's what we kind of created the product to help support. Uh, and so when you're working on a transformation program that has you know, a, a, a seven, eight, nine figure um, objective in hand, those programs are managed by large scale uh, firms. Those are managed by the Baines of the world, the Alex partners, the KPMGs, Accentures. Those are the folks that actually help an organization get organized and execute on those programs. And so we set out with a, a right from the very beginning uh, to create an application that was really enabled to help support those firms and also support them in a way that makes their approach uh, still be unique in terms of how they go to market. So what we created in the platform became a really flexible solution to allow for each of those firms to, in essence, almost white label our product, really create their secret sauce in terms of how they assess, how do they prioritize, how do they manage a, a COE and stand up a COE for their customers and put that into uh, a software that allows them to go to market and deliver that value for their firm, for their customers, which ultimately become Shibumi customers. So that whole journey for us started uh, with a lot of work that we were doing with Bain and then moved into a lot of the firms that focused a lot on automation, which are the KPMGs, the EYs, the Accentures, Deloitte's of the world. Uh, and oftentimes when you see the, the work that we're doing with them has been you'll see a product that they have enabled uh, that they're released in the marketplace and actually behind the scenes, it's a powered by Shibumi solution. Right. It doesn't have our name front and center to it. It's just one that's sitting out there. And we, and even outside of the big ones, you can, the, the sort of large enterprise audit and advisory firms, the very boutique firms like a review group and those folks also use our platform in that same model and same format. And they've been great partners for us. It's one of those, great kind of validation points that right. it, was, it was a big validation point for me when I started to see, you know, those, those applications out there. So, um, Ken, you want to end with your last slide here? <laughs> People always ask, right? The sort of, what is it? What does that mean? The, the name itself always gets a, a lot of connotation. So, uh, you know, it, it stands for effortless perfection. It's a, it's a, a Japanese term. It, Technically, you know, truth be known, comes from a spy novel that really has very little to do with, <laughs> with business transformation, but uh, the, the name translates to kind of maximum effectiveness with minimal effort or effortless perfection, and that's kind of what we set out to do. Uh, and then, you know, as of course, as we did research on the name, and, and besides just thinking it's a cool name, uh, there became a lot of business connotation around lean and, and the sort of continuous improvement aspect, the lean principles with process improvement, there became a lot of philosophies around Shibumi, which is where our name came from. So I And that's great. And uh, so we're going to now move into the, the automation air, uh, anywhere section. I'm going to get through ours in about 13 to 15 minutes, and then we'll open it up for, for Q&A. Again, trying to make sure we, you know, stay consistent in our themes from, from our partner, Fortress IQ, Shibumi, and then Automation Anywhere. Um, you know, we believe we are the leader in uh, in the digital development of the digital workforce, and we're starting to see 
especially in this crisis. And, and as John mentioned, when we kind of kick things off, you know, we are in a completely different world right now. There's inflection points for companies where you, you have to, you know, uh, you know, like I've, I've been part of Netscape. I've been part of LoudCloud. I've been at Salesforce. I've been at companies where there were different inflection points that really, you know, a, a crisis can make, uh, you know, can, can, can actually make a statement for an organization and say, yeah, there, there is a need for a digital workforce. And so the, the current crisis that we're in is something that's not to be, you know, belittled at all, but what we're seeing from our customers is just astounding in terms of how those that were prepared and were able to turn on a dime to help their customers and, and maintain their business has been amazing. And I highly recommend you go to our website and you see some of the posts that uh, our customers are making at the at our people community uh, portals and things like that. It, it's been truly a, a, inspiring. Um, the problem that we saw and we've been working on is this, you know, after 20 years of automation technologies and all these different things that are happening, the, the majority of business processes are still manual, especially those that, you know, are, inter, you know, come between like cross application, cross department, cross uh, functional areas of a company. And, and why is that? Um, we see, you know, like the, the agent, the augmentation of human labor with digital labor is front and center right now, especially in our crisis, okay? You have on the left side, you have a, a variety of on-premise and cloud, you know, uh, systems, uh, either from commercial vendors or homegrown in the enterprise. You know, there's a big gap around that between, you know, what is actually, you know, uh, what can be automated, either through APIs or backend, you know, integrations. Um, the humans are still touching a tremendous amount of these applications and going across these, these, these cross applications. And so there, there just tends to be a gap at times. And so even when you see, you know, companies focusing 100% on APIs, you see companies focusing 100% on redesigning an app, there's still this human labor component that needs to be augmented by a digital workforce. And so what we are looking at at Automation Anywhere and the solution that we're trying to, um, you know, to, to promote and, and to, um, you know, deliver across the globe is how do we take knowledge workers? How do we help those enterprises that have the knowledge worker um, develop a digital workforce? How does it interact with every system that that, that, that enterprise has to deal with? And how do we help them, uh, you know, deliver the processes and automations around that? That's the 80%. That's the big picture items that we're trying. And it's really hard. And it's gotten way harder in the current crisis that we're in. Because you, you don't have the ability right now to maybe look across the cubicle and say, hey, how, how are we doing it like that? You know, you're, you're very disparate and very broken in terms of, you know, having the human connection that you're, you typically rely on. Um, so defining this int intelligent digital workforce has been our mantra for the last two or three years. Um, you know, as an organization, we've been around longer than that, but we've been really pushing the envelope on, the, on this intelligent di digital workforce, the, probably the longest out of any vendor that's been out there. The way that what we view as a digital workforce is multiple components. There's the enterprise RPA layer, that's kind of the nuts and bolts where you can build attended automations or unattended automations. One of the great things that um, both Fortress IQ and Shibumi help us with is determining, you know, like what's the value of attended? How do we, you know, how do we help in that customer service and experience world? Unattended, mission critical back office type automations and, and how do we pull those together? How do we cut across different organizations? Like in a, think about a supply chain unattended, you know, mission critical uh, digital worker, that's a very, very tough kind of application. We couple that then with, with cognitive and intelligence like our IQBot platform, which is an AI platform that sits on top of the RPA uh, enterprise uh, platform that we have. And so now you've got unstructured data, you've got um, you know, UI automation in that, you've got predictive process outcomes. So once we understand behavior, we can kind of predict what that next, next step might, might be. Or when there's an error in a process, 
how do we quickly, we've seen that before, how do we quickly jump in and fix that and again, keep it away from a human? Couple that with uh, smart analytics that we have with Bot Insight, where we can provide the operational and the business insights. And again, this stuff flows back, you know, is in our platform, but can flow back to other systems and help them be more intelligent, like Shibumi and Fortress IQ. And I think the big, big picture is this, uh, our digital, our, our bot store and the digital workforces that are being pre-componentized and the ecosystem that we have as an organization. We actually are working on some technologies that overlap a little bit with, with our partners. Every, you know, kind of large platform player has some of that. But in the reality, just like when I was at Salesforce or other organizations, you always have a little bit uh, of that potentially um, of that overlap, and you know we, we're 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 building this entire digital workforce platform. We will have you know table stakes in certain areas that we need to do, but we're also going to have very very strong partnerships with the Shibumis of the world, the Fortress IQs, the Microsofts, the SAPs, all the other different players that are out there that we need to that our customers are dealing with that we need to work with. Um, you know, why leverage a digital workforce? You know, what, what's important about a digital workforce? Why is it important? So obviously the things that jump to the top at first, like optimizing labor costs and increasing capacity, like in the crisis that we're in right now, that's, that's, that's you know, still a pretty, you know, pretty important, um, you know, uh, milestone to hit. But number two, increasing speed, accuracy, availability, this is where what we really started to see with a lot of our customers really kind of come to fruition. You know, it's like, how can we continue to keep the lights on when we're, when we're remote? How, you know, we're dealing with, you know, companies where they're trying to keep their owner operators in business. You know, how do we help, you know, uh, you know, banks, our banking customers process, you know, PPP applications much faster. How do we look at fraud detection? I mean, there's, there's so many different things that with the crisis that customers are now being re-challenged with that we've had to kind of turn our technology um, you know a little bit not on its on its head but in a direction that you know may they may have thought it was important at some point but now they think it's really important because they have this you know they, they have this backlog and they have this need where they didn't think it was important how do we help customers you know help their customers get to banking customers so that they can get to the get to their loans and, and the SBA processes, et cetera. So there's, there's a, it's a completely different world that we're in. When we were giving this presentation, maybe, you know, 60, 90 days ago, we may have thought of things, you know, very differently, but the impact of what we're seeing customers, you know, dealing with, you know, some of these, you know, are just really top of mind right now. Improve compliance controls and audibility. This this is a just a huge area for many organizations right now. I mean, like they've got to be able to look backwards and know even throughout this crisis, like what what happened and when. How do we report against that? You know, we've got fiduciary responsibilities. We got to make sure that we're able to you know pull up that information and show our you know our, our CEO uh, what's happening. Um, we have a major bank as a customer that, you know, uh, just announced their earnings and number three on the list of things that they were very grateful for and that they were doing well was all around automation and how they were able to quickly turn on a dime for their customers and, and process, you know, unbelievable amount of typically would have been paper to get their customers, um, you know, the loans that they needed to keep themselves going. Um, Deliver this business intelligence. Why? You know, like, why do this? Why shouldn't we do this? Why should we do more of it? That's really, you know, the, the essence of what a lot of the companies are looking for from the business intelligence is tell us what we should be doing and how much more we should be doing of it or what we shouldn't be doing. Um, enabling this digital transformation. Ken and John both talked about it different, you know, areas in their presentations. And John had a very large number out there for, you know, the amount of money spent on digital transformation that seems to be wasted because they didn't have the foresight. They didn't have the ability to know what they wanted to automate, when they wanted to automate it, what the true value of that automation would be. And, and again, some people are, there's some very high, you know, a volume, 
you know, uh, automations that can be done for organizations that don't, don't have high ROIs tied to them, but still need to be done. Like something simple like password reset. You know, things like that don't, aren't going to come with a huge ROI, but from a convenience and experience factor are, are huge in terms of making the organization easier to deal with and, and, and making work fun and things like that. And again, enhancing employee morale. We've, we've heard a lot of great stories uh, lately from customers in terms of, you know, just, you know, being super thankful that they had the automation program in place when they did because they've been able to get a tremendous amount of value out of it. Here's just some quotes from different customers that we have out there. Um, you know, uh, I, these aren't specific to the crisis that we're in right now. I'll, I'll make sure I, I, I put that out there because, you know, these are quotes that we've had. We are starting to develop some very specific ones to, to what we're seeing um, happening in today's world. But, you know, when you look at hours saved or security or quick wins or simple plug and play, you know, um, cost savings of 40%, you know, those are just some things that jump out at you to make you, you know, feel good about, you know, if you can plan properly in the front of the, of building out your program with the proper process um, discovery, and then being able to evaluate things, you get some very, very big wins here. And then here's a, um, you know, when we, when we start to look at some of our, the global customers that we're dealing with, you know, 3,100 plus, across the globe, you know, we've, we, we're, we're clearly on a, on a path that is uh, providing value, but it takes great partnerships, it takes great customers, it takes a company like Automation Anywhere that's willing to listen and change. And, um, and I feel like we're, you know, we're going to get through this, this crisis and be a better organization, be, uh, be able to do some things better for our customers and, and, and uh, continue to grow with our partners. So with that, We've got about um, eight minutes left to go through q and I think uh, our team, Kel our marketing team, Kelsey and uh, Heather, we were gonna unmute. And so if, if people want to just go ahead and ask some questions, we'd be happy to answer them for you. Hey guys, this is uh, Ted Perkovich with Autos. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey Ted. Yeah. I have a, a, a kind of a strategic question, probably for John and Ken actually. So, what level of maturity are you seeing with uh, customers who are starting out and ultimately would be willing to adopt this kind of integrated strategy of of soup to nuts opportunity to monitoring type of approach to essentially automating their COE with respect to the collection of, of these tool sets like you have. Ken, you want to start off? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, so thanks, Ted. Thanks for the question. The, uh, uh, if, you, if you think uh, about kind of what we're doing from that perspective, and, you even met, and I even mentioned it in the beginning of, of my slides, the idea of getting involved early as you're just trying to get your feet wet in automation, but having a focus on kind of the value side of it, along with building up the technical chops to deliver, uh, becomes really critical in the very beginning to get those initial proof points squared away. So what we end up having to do, and, and we've done it multiple times, is, uh, and the solution is, is there may be a lot of capabilities in there. So kind of scaling that down to really fit uh, the journey that an organization is on becomes really important because you, you do need to help identify and help support an organization with its quick wins uh, and allow somebody to get started small in that scenario. But as part of getting those quick wins, really be able to, to communicate that or sort of market it to the rest of the firm is one of those little points that helps kind of drive an inflection point or help drive the scale. So I still think getting involved early helps. It just means that the amount of effort, the amount of work that somebody's doing as part of their team it CME may be a little bit shifted to let's identify whether we have the skills to be able to deliver, how fast we can deliver, and the value that we can deliver it against uh, becomes kind of the things that we focus on. John, I'll turn it over. I'm sure you want to add something to that. Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks, Ken, and, and thanks for the question, Ted. I think, you know, we are not uh, definitely not the first stop on your automation journey. You know, we tend to come in, you know, once the 
low hanging fruit has been automated and people have gotten their their feet wet in RPA or, or DPA, whatever the, the technology may be, and need that additional level of insight to figure out, okay, where, where do I go next? Um, you know, just as, as a sort of data point, a number of our clients have come to us with, you know, they've got licenses for X number of bots from, you know, any of the RPA vendors, you know, whoever it may be, and they can't, you know, get to the scale that they need to get to fully utilize, you know, their licenses that they've already purchased. So, you know, we come in to help accelerate and speed that process to, you know, get them to more fully utilize their investment that they've made in, in RPA. And that's happened with two or three clients, as well as a number of, of folks in our pipeline as well, have come to us with just that sort of gap between, you know, what they've purchased and what they're actually utilizing and try to help us close the close the, the gap there. And, and Ted, I, it's a great question. I actually, I've, I've been, you know, I've been in this game now since 2018 and I saw a need for it actually. We, you know, we, the, the appetite was there for customers to come in and purchase like the kind of the entry level enterprise package. And we would do things for them in um, very manual. Yeah, we would do sounds like an idea and, for sure. And, and another and a number of crowdsourcing type initiatives to help them figure out where to go. And I'm, you know, I'm a kind of a disciple of Mark Andreessen and you know, I would yeah. at Netscape and Loud Cloud. And so as you look at Mark's theory over the years in terms of software eating the world, I knew at some point just in okay, like good. we were going to build, like there was going to be the opportunity to have a digital, <coughs> digital. footprint at, at the beginning, the middle, you know, that leads up to the automations. And so I, I, I believe that, you know, for those customers that have already, uh, you know, kind of jumped in with their RPA vendors, hopefully the majority of them being automation anywhere and, and, um, and bringing in technologies like Fortress IQ and, and Shibumi, us working at the front end with new logos that where they can start with that, and then much more quickly ramp to 50, 100, to 1,000 automations. I, I think you're gonna see both of that happening in the industry. Cool, thanks guys. Any other questions out there? Take that silence. I think everybody wants to get to lunch, Mike. Yeah, I think <laughs> silence is golden. Okay, all right, guys, we're gonna we'll we'll uh, we'll end the video here or the uh, set, the webinar here. I again want to thank John and, and Ken for their time and everybody for joining. Uh, I wish everybody uh, you know for their families to be safe. Um, you know, as we get through this crisis, uh, feel free to reach out to us or any of the three organizations that have been on on this call, and we'd be happy to help. Um, also, I highly recommend you know coming to the website as well as to our our people community portals where you can see what customers are are posting and sharing about their experiences right now. And uh, just wish everybody have a, a great rest of their week, and appreciate you taking an hour with us. Much appreciate it as well. Thanks again for coordinating, Mike, and everybody stay safe out there. Thank you. Have a good day.